and let's talk about what do we dissolve the sample in when we go to make the injection. This is another common question uh, that, that comes in. Um, and this is important because the sample solvent, whatever you dissolve the sample in, is actually going to affect the chromatography. The reason, we, we want to assume that the sample has no effect on chromatography, but reality is, if the sample is dissolved in a really strong solvent, let's say 100% methanol, and you're running a relatively weak solvent, let's say 80% you know, water, 20% methanol, then that plug of 100% methanol is going to act like, um, uh, like a plug of really strong mobile phase, and it's going to disrupt the chromatography. It's going to give you a lousy peak shape. Usually what happens is you get split peaks up front. The first peak is split horribly, double it up front, uh, maybe a shoulder on the next couple of peaks, uh, more pronounced up front than later on. So that's what happens if you dissolve the sample in something too strong, which is defined as stronger than the mobile phase. So ideal example is you dissolve your sample in the mobile phase. If you're running um, uh, 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 80-20 water methanol, so it's only 20% methanol, then you should dissolve your sample in 80-20 water methanol. That means when you make the injection, your sample solvent will just disappear. You want it just to blend in with the mobile phase so you won't even notice um, uh, it, it going through the column. That's the ideal situation where we get the, the sample solvent has no effect at all on the chromatography. Now, if your sample is dissolved in something weaker than the mobile phase, that is usually okay. So your sample is dissolved in 100% water, your mobile phase is 50-50 methanol water. Yeah, that's usually okay. In fact, there are times where we could use that to our advantage. So let me now sort of step from you know, sample solvent to a little bit of a cool concept. And that is, uh, what if I wanted to make a huge volume injection? Why would I want to do that? I'm doing trace analysis. I want to find trace benzene, toluene, xylene, and I inject it on my column. And if a five microliter injection, my favorite, I make five microliter on just about everything. Well, that's a great injection for chromatography, but not so great for sensitivity. If we start to increase the injection volume, we go from a five to a 10 to a 20, the peaks will get taller and taller and taller, better and better sensitivity. But the peaks are also will begin to broaden out. So they don't quite double in, in, in height as we go up because they're getting broader as well. Is there a way that we can stop that broadening? Yeah, if you were to take, let's say a hundred microliter sample of pure water, uh, and inject it onto a reverse phase column, all, every organic in that, uh, in that sample, the 100 microliters, is going to stick to the column, and it's just going to uh, uh, focus. So if the sample enters a column uh, like this, right when it hits the column, every organic molecule is going to focus and collect at the head of the column, and they're going to sit there, every benzene, toluene, mo uh, toluene, xylene molecule in the sample, it's going to be right there, and then when you start a gradient, they'll start to move through the column and separate. So, when we talk about sample solvent, the best idea, dissolve the sample in the mobile phase, best answer, uh, or dissolve it in something weaker than the mobile phase. If you really want to go to an extreme, we could take advantage of that and actually focus the sample on the column. So um, uh, what's my typical injection volume? I mentioned it's five microliters. The less you inject, the better the chromatography, the longer the column's going to last. Uh, if you need to inject more, you do that for sensitivity. If you want to inject one microliter, or let me put it this way, let's say someone sends you a sample that's in 100% methanol, and for whatever reason you can't dilute it or you don't want to touch it. So in that case, we know the sample solvent is too strong. In that case, let's make a really small volume injection, like a two microliter or one microliter injection. Today's modern equipment, uh, on my equipment, I can make a one microliter injection and have you know well within 1% uh, RSDs. So uh, really less than half percent RSDs. So um, we can make really small volume injections. The only time I would ever do that is if the sample solvent is too strong, if I'm afraid of it interfering with chromatography. So that's our little talk on uh, what it means to dissolve the sample in the mobile phase and what should we dissolve the sample in um, and how we uh, measure things like that. So if you want answers to more questions, come back to axionlabs.com, send us questions, send us requests. We plan to do a bunch of this, uh, a bunch of hands-on videos on the equipment itself. Uh, so if you have a request, let us know.